In today's tutorial, let's do the plaid blanket crochet poncho together. This is not as hard as it looks, and I'm going to decipher it all right now. So welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the plaid blanket crochet poncho together. So what is the difference between the scarf that we did and this one over here? This one's wider. This is the exact same block layout as what is appearing here. The only difference is that this is wider. So what I'm going to be doing today is that I'm going to be taking you through the pattern to be able to understand what you're looking at here for the instructions and what would the differences were. Then the rest of the tutorial I'm going to play the rest of what is here because what is learned here about reading the graphs, about changing your colors, about following the blocks, about doing the striping line is exactly the identical to what you'll be doing in here. So let's uh, take a look closer at this pattern next and let me show you a little bit of the ins and outs. So let's take a look at the pattern here. So it's a one size, it's 38 inches across and that does not include the fringe that's there and it's 27 inches deep from the neckline and down. So you can expect for a nice draping like you see within the model here. So what we're looking at here is that we're looking at repeat patterns in order to make that scarf that I showed you wider. And so it's just a matter of looking at everything. All the ball counts are here and the colors that are suggested are right here. Again, those are just suggestions. If you like a different color, you can still use the same graph and just change out your colors in order to make it work. So as we go further into this pattern, you're going to notice that there is a lot of instructions here. This is page three. Well, it should have been page two. There should uh, is a diagram just like this here and this is showing you what the shape looks like as if the project was laying down flat. So you see that is a big wide panel, uh, panel here and then one goes off into one side and one goes off into the other. The neck for you is right here and this would drape over the front and then we just continue and there's a lot of written instructions. But I'd like to show you the graph because the graph is going to be the deal breaker for you on this particular pattern. So here's a closer look at the graph that you're going to be playing with today. So what's going to be happening is that this is the exact same graph that was provided to you in the tartan scarf right from here all the way to here. But there's something new on this one compared to the last one. The repeat pattern is identical to what was in the tartan scarf. So as soon as you get to row 25 you restart back down here on the red line and you keep going and it keeps the pattern going consistent. But there's a new repeat right here from here to here. And this is what's going to extend this to make it wider. So I've read through the instructions and I've created a looking graph for you in order for you to visualize this better. Now for myself there was a lot of written words and it took me a little bit to understand what I'm exactly looking at. But what you're looking at here is that this particular panel times by a certain number equals the final width of your particular poncho. I know that's hard. So let me show you to you in diagram format because you may want to do this and print them out and cut them just like I'm about to show you. So let's take a look at the graph. So this is what was provided and I purposely have it on the one side of the screen because I'm about to show you some magic. <laughs> Better brace yourself, it's good. So what we have here is that we have the pattern and it shows that there's a repeat right here. So what you can do for yourself because if you have a hard time reading instructions like I do, I need a very visual map and what I will do is I'll get my fancy tape out and I'll tape things together so I can physically see it. So what I did is that I decided that it says to do a repeat. So it says do such and such. There is an asterisk to tell you to do a repeat of what you see right here and it tells you that right on the graph. So if you cut your next piece of paper, if you print this out again, do you see this line right here? That, that's the red line to show you where the repeat start, starts, right? And this is where it ends. So if you grab a separate piece of paper and cut it right at that same line and place it at that next red line like this, you have the entire width of your afghan or of your project all done. So you can see here this is the pewter look that is in the center back of the model just like you see here and so you can just follow it up. So it will tell you to do something then it will tell you to do this and then it says repeat that again and then to finish that. That's exactly what it's showing. So this is really a great way to be able to tell and what I would do is tape this together but there's something else going on in this particular project and I want to show you that because there's more to it than just what you're seeing right now. 
Well, do you remember this one? So this here is what it looks like here and do you notice that there is a chamfer here? It's like a, a angle going off. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna have you start on the right side okay on this side and it's gonna ask you to go to a certain amount of stitches and then stop and then you're gonna do single crochet two together in order to create this only for three rows okay and I'm gonna show that to you on the models back so you can prove it that it's actually happening and then you're gonna do all of the right first and get it done done then you're gonna come back and do this side and on this side you're going to start on this side and you're going to start two together and do for three rows just like you see here and work on this side up and that's in the instructions and I'll show that to you in a bit as well. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna do all of the back here and then once you get to the certain height, see how it says 27 inches? 27 inches is basically at the halfway point you're going to do your rows and all these instructions are available to you in the pattern as well and then you just do one side and then do the other. Once you have to do one side and the other it gets faster but where do you see that happening on this? Let me show you. Now this is what the sample looks like when it's hanging on the rack. So it's being stretched because it's hanging on the particular coat hanger. But do you notice that this is one color here and it's kind of looking like it's coming off on an angle and that should be happening because that's correct and then you have one complete block and then the other one is kind of going up on an angle too. And here is that pewter that I was talking about that's in the center of the back. So what you're going to notice in this particular pattern if you work up to your dimensions like you should you're gonna come back to here. And this is where your pewter is. So if you're going to do this kind of idea what you're gonna do is that when you come and do the right side okay you have another graph and if you lay it down like so you're going to notice that it's going to sit properly okay. So you're going to go and do your colors just like you, you were doing before but the first three rows is gonna just have you come in more narrow and then it's gonna go straight up. So it's just following the pattern and this repeat pattern is the line where it is and so if you match everything together you will notice that it will all be in sync with each other. So that's one side. So then once you get that side done and you go to the dimensions that you need to go you're gonna come and do the other side and you can see it here. And just coming over and matching up the lines together and you will see that that's happening as well. So a chamfer on this side more of an angle and then you're gonna work your way up the other side. So printing out these things actually make it a lot easier and now that you can physically see it like this you can actually notice this in the particular project on how it's all working up within the model. So this is a great way to do it. So this is not a hard pattern to look at. Let me just take you through some of the instructions of just making sure you understand what you're reading. But if you do it like this I think that you'll have great success. So let's start on page one. We're just gonna quickly go through this so that you understand how to read it and the page one is giving you all the yarn play. It's giving you what the abbreviations will be in this pattern. It gives you all the counts for the balls as well as plus it shows the example without the model wearing it. Let's go on to page number two. This scares me. <laughs> I should never admit that but that scares me when I see that much writing and that's my honeys. That's when you grab your, your graphs <laughs> because you can lose your mind. This is second row. Look at all of these instructions. Mm -hmm. I know that's what I'm saying. So if you can actually use your graphs this is so much easier but they have to do this. So to provide you all those because there's some people that can absolutely follow this but they can't follow the graph. <laughs> so if you can get by this this is really good but this is telling you the story of all those graphs coming together and when you can see it in the graph format when you see a block uh, working its way up then it becomes a lot easier for you to be able to follow when you're following along on these instructions. So don't let that fool you. Don't let this scare you. I'm telling it. <laughs> <laughs> my worst nightmare ever. So let's move on to page number three. Page number three is when it gets starts to be really fun because <laughs> I like big pictures just like so. So the right side starts here and remember how I showed you how the right side just continues to go up on the project. This is the shaping of it and there's three rows that's gonna tell you how to shape it and that's exactly what you're seeing here. So remember how I told you 
when you had it um, that the right side was going to chamfer in. So you're gonna follow it along and you will notice that it's gonna get smaller and smaller and that's the right side actually telling you the instructions that are gonna get smaller with the single crochet decrease and then you follow it straight up. And on the left side which is starting right here where I highlighted it, same thing is happening here. So it says skip the next 11 stitches. So what it's happening here is that when you have it all laid out it's telling you to skip so many stitches and then start right here on the same right side. And then so you start on this side and you work your way this way in order to keep the stitches looking balanced. If you start on this side, this side of your project will look upside down when you're wearing it. It truly will. So don't mess with that. So that's what's gonna happen here. So you see a fun little diagram here. This is how to apply the thin lines that are going straight up and today in today's tutorial I'm gonna show you how to do that as well as we go on. And then we have the diagram on what it should look like. So you have your main back, your panels like I've shown you and then this is how to do the vertical like this. Again a lot of writing. It's very simple. It's just a slip stitch line going up and it's strategically placed and if you look at the model you can kind of see where they place those as well. So there's the pewter line here right in the middle. You can see that just kind of went in the middle of the next block and kind of over. Again your creativity you can do as many or as little as you wish. Then finally on page five this is what's gonna save the day for you is that fabulous diagram just like so. Don't be uh, scared to print out extra copies because when you see it all done and you can actually see the repeat pattern going on like so you'll notice that it's not as intimidating. Grab your fancy dancy tape put it together and then once you can see everything going together like this you will see that it will make a lot of sense and you will have a success story instead of a horror story. <laughs> so this is how to do this. So in the next part of this tutorial I'm going to take you through doing the steps of being able to follow the graph. I'm gonna give you key tips on what I would do in order to follow these stitch work more carefully. I'm going to show you how to start. Remember that the instructions I am doing is part of the scarf. You have to substitute the information that is used in here. So I think it was like chaining of 72 or something that I did in the tartan scarf. So here when I look back it says chain 114. So 114 is gonna take you all the way across and then you follow it like this instead. Remember that you'll need more bobbins. So you have more bobbin colors to worry about in order to get that. Again if you're like me and you kind of stash yarn or you have a big yarn collection I would do as many big balls as possible and instead of making all the little mini bobbins again that's completely up to you. So this is gonna be a really cool way of doing it. I'm gonna show you how to then change the color here once we then reverse. I'm gonna show you how to do these solid lines and then of course I'll show you how to do the vertical lines. So I'm going to use that tutorial as a template because it's the exact same pattern that you're following. The techniques are more important but you cannot do this kind of project without understanding how to read graphs. That's just the bottom line and that's it. So without further ado let me take you on to the rest of the tutorial showing you how to do the tartan scarf but use that just to fast forward in order to follow the instructions to learn how to do this concept. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna work on making tartan and crochet and we're gonna use the big tartan crochet scarf. It's a super scarf as an example of how to do tartan. Tartan is actually not too uh, difficult to do but you have to prepare yourself in advance for all the steps that are needed in order to achieve this look. Now Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> the tartan scarf would definitely not be built in a day but it's just one of those concepts that is really heavily in demand from the crochet crowders. They really like this particular concept and today I'm gonna show you how to do this concept uh, from start to finish. So the basic gist of tartan is it's very much like grafgan work. You've seen the photographs in afghans and etc. where you have to change colors in order to create the picture that is in the graph. Um, and this is exactly what it is but here it's using kind of blocks instead. So instead of just a fancy uh, picture of a waterfall or whatever that people are putting into their afghans it's really just about blocks and rectangles and etc. in order to make it work. And it, because of the way that you're dropping and adding colors it just makes it very uh, unique and of course this color that I'm using here on camera today you can use any color that you wish when it comes to your tartan. So you can substitute and use the instructions that you see here and actually 
actually make up your own color schemes. You need a total of four colors in order to kind of make it work. So we have gold, we have black, we have gray and white. So I would Google probably tartan colors and see if you can come up with something and then go to your yarn stash in order to figure it out. So let's uh, determine what we need to do in order to make this concept. Um, I've actually broken this tutorial down into seven different sections and I'm gonna try to cover as much as I can so that it avoid leaving you with many questions at the end. So let's start our first section and it's reading graphs. So all of this here you'll see that in the diagram here or uh, the instructions that there is a lot of words. Okay, I don't got time for this stuff. It's great if you love to read patterns but you know the wonderful thing about yarnspirations.com of course they have uh, not only illustrations but they have a graph and this is what I'm gonna be concentrating on today in order to do it. So if you look carefully at this graph you can see the same concept going on. So you can see this block of section here and then I'm just finishing up this other block here. So I have more of a flat kind of uh, rectangle or uh, square shape and then it goes more to rectangle. So I'm using this and it shows that there's a repeat pattern. So let me pull up this graph more closely for you and show you what you're looking at. So here is a closer look at the graph and you can see that they have blocks of different colors and they have a color key on what you need A, B, C and D. Of course you can assign any color so if you want A to be red instead of uh, this color then you can do so. So that's up to you and your creativity. So it's gonna get you started and in row number one as we come across it's gonna get you started and then you'll see that there's a repeat going on here. So rows number two all the way to 25 is a repeat pattern. So once you get to 25 you just pick back up down here here and you start once again. So you're gonna end up with these amazing blocks and it looks really kind of consistent at the end and you can see that the colors are very clearly in with each other. But what I really wanna point out to you is looking between the blocks. What's going on there? Cause there's something kind of unusual there and I wanna show you. So here we have a closer look of the blocks and you'll notice that one block finishes and there's a single crochet here and then there's a single crochet on the other side and then there's a new block. So what I noticed in this pattern which actually kind of took me by surprise because I've never done tartan like this before is that there is single crochets that are pretty much aligned. So you do a whole block and it ends with a single crochet and then a next color comes up and then we start and finish this with a single crochet and etc. So where these blocks really are in between you're gonna notice that there's gonna be two single crochet side by side. So one will be this color and the other will be the other color. This actually really allows you to do the color transitions really quite nicely and it actually makes a lot of sense. So you're seeing ovals and plus signs. Let's cover that next. So the ovals and the plus signs, the ovals if you looked at the stitch key are like this are considered chain and the plus signs are single crochet. So you're gonna notice this is called the linen stitch or also the moss stitch. So you have single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one but look where it's going. The single crochet is going into the gap spaces right underneath. And so this makes it really quite easy to follow. So in actual fact you have only like two uh, rows that kind of repeat. So if you look at this row there's two plus signs in a row. So two single crochets and then an oval and then you skip one single crochet to the next. The next time you come across see it's a plus sign, chain one, plus sign, chain one. So it's a plus or single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one. So you'll notice that it's different every other row. That is so easy to follow in this particular example that it's really uh, not even funny if you ask me. So it's just a matter of looking at this diagram. So there's really no fancy footwork here involved in being able to follow these diagrams because the reality is, is that once you get started it is so easy to follow. So let me show you what I do with the other side of this. So here I am on the other side and as I complete a row I just check mark done. As I do another one check mark done and I work my way all the way up like that so that I'm keeping count in order to do it. So what's happening here let me just shift up a bit and oh oh there's two solid lines here. Do you see this color here? This here is the stripe that is appearing across in black in my particular example. So the striping of the thinner stripes is actually done and you are not and I repeat <laughs> this sounds so serious. I repeat you do not fasten off these colors that are underneath. In fact you just carry it and leave it out of place. Go across with your black and then pick it back up again. So that you don't have to literally when you're doing these stripes fasten off and then have to do all the, all the tails and then refasten back on. You leave it on and then just deal with it. Let me show you that on the example. So here on the example you can see that the black line is all the way across. 
So if you look at the other side you can actually physically see the carrying up of the yarn. So I've left this string out for a reason for later on today's tutorial. So you can see that I carried up the yarn as I went. So you literally have a good side and a bad side but that's not a deal breaker for me because it's kind of matching the color anyway. But that's one of those things instead of fastening off every time you're going to do these black little stripes because literally it is only one row that goes across in order to create that. So at the end of this and if you looked at the models you'll notice that there was a vertical line of a thin line going up through here and through here. And the reality is to do that it's done after the whole project is done. So the, the thinner vertical lines are done at the end and not during the process so that you don't have to worry about that because if you have to just worry about one particular stitch of just going in the vertical it would drive you absolutely batty on this particular project or any project I should say. So that's how you would read these uh, diagrams or, or charts and graphs and that's not a, a bad thing. So let's move on and we're gonna worry about how to get these individual colors. Is it one ball or is it many? Let me show you. So let's cover on bobbins. What are bobbins? Bobbins are the fact that you have many balls that are making up this pattern. So for example this yellow that you see here you do not see it carrying through the white because it doesn't carry through the white. It's a separate ball. So here would be the ball for that. So these balls are matching over top of each other. So and actually in fact to do this first lines so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven you have seven bobbins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the neat thing about it. So you can eventually end up with a massive tangle but the reality is is that because it's such a small area here that by the time you have to uh, finish all these off you can untangle really quite easily and then kind of reset yourself. So it's not like you're dedicating a whole afghan where you end up having to go several feet and you end up with the bird's nest of tangling. So if I were you and you were me I'm a person that collects yarn. I instead of doing mini bobbins I would have probably did the regular ball and had four balls just like this ready for me instead of doing mini bobbins. So the white here just have two white balls instead and then the gray would just use it right from the actual gray ball instead of doing these mini bobbins. Same with the black I would do the same thing. So if that's something that you have yarn for it instead of worrying about the bobbins you can do it this way. So as we work away we're gonna be working with this yellow and then we drop the yellow and then we start doing the white and then we drop this. And so we keep dropping and dropping and dropping as we go along all the way to the end. And when we turn our work back again is that when we go to turn our project and work up the other way we pick up the color again and we continue just like this. Do you see that? Does that make sense to you? So it becomes really quite easy to do in order to kind of follow along. Now the secret is is when you change these bobbins where should the yarn be and I'm gonna be covering that as we change the yarn colors. But what we'd like to do first is that we would like to get started on this particular pattern and I'm gonna show you how to get started and you'll notice that there is a solid line of gold here. It's too hard to do a chain with changing the colors immediately so you need that at the very uh, start in order to have kind of consistency. So let's uh, look at about uh, doing this and let's start working on this project and then showing you more steps as we get involved. Okay so let's show you how to do all of these uh, particular examples and the rest of the examples of changing the yarn over. I'm gonna do you how to finish off a bobbin so when we go to finish see all these colors finish and we start fresh all over again and that allows you to reset. I'm gonna show you how to do a solid line across and then I'm gonna show you how to do a strip going up and then I'm gonna show you how to do the fringe if you would like to do that because the fringe is actually quite fun and I would kind of really uh, consider that as well. So let's uh, grab our yarn and we're going to grab our crochet hook and let's begin. So let's begin and let's get ourselves prepared in order to do this. So in the particular pattern it says to chain 72. So instead of having to count all of these to figure out if it, what it was it's chaining of 72. That's where the words come in handy for you. So what I've done is that I've counted the number of single crochets that are in each color before switching to the next color. So I have here six. I did the next one four, six, seven, six, four and six. This will help you stay in balance on the very first time around in order to make sure that you are keeping your counts properly. So let's uh, begin and we're gonna chain 72 to begin and I'm gonna be using this chart on and off through today's tutorial. Okay so let's begin and I'm gonna create a slip knot. And the slip knot doesn't count as anything. And what I want you to do is that I want you to chain 72. So just pull through. So one, two, three, four, 
five, and six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And please go all the way to seventy-two for me, and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I now have my chain seventy-two done. So what I need to do now is I need to bring back the remaining block of colors. So I'm just gonna reach forward and bring them all. These are the bobbins that I made. So what you just can do for these bobbins is that you can just like kind of pull them out of the main yarn and make little ones if you want to or just use a fresh ball of yarn depending on how many you need. So I have these in order in which they're going to appear and we're gonna start off with the gold here which I already have on the hook. So this one here is already considered one of the bobbins and so then I'm going to move along in this order. So let me begin and let me show you how to get started. So using the diagram as a helping tool this is what you're gonna do. So you're gonna go second chain from the hook and you're gonna apply a single crochet and you're gonna still use the same color that you have. So this is considered one bobbin. You're going to chain one and you're going to skip one and go single crochet in the second one over. And remember how I told you I wrote the number of single crochets that are uh, required for each block. So this one requires you to do six. So I chain one, skip one and then single crochet in the next. So there's, there's a total count of now three out of the six. So chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. This is number four. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. This is number five. Chain one, skip one and single crochet into the next. But do not finish. <laughs> Am I throwing you for a loop? Do not finish this one because we have to introduce the next bobbin in here before you finish this final one. Let me show you what to do with that. So we're gonna bring up another bobbin. This time it's gonna be white. So this one is not yet finished because we're gonna use that white. But before you do anything this is a color change technique that is absolutely required if you're not gonna get serious about tartan don't bother to do it. You need to move this string forward out of the way just pinch it with your thumb so that it's in the forward and by the time you're getting all the way across your chain all of the strands of the bobbins will be on the forward side on your side so you're looking at it. So now don't create a knot just loop and just finish that stitch that you were doing. And now we're gonna move to the white. So to lock in the white remember what I said as we showed you and get this straggler so that it's out of the way you don't do anything just let it dangle you're gonna move into the next stitch and you're just gonna do a single crochet. Remember what I said when the blocks are side by side two single crochets are in a row. One is one color, one is the other. So now we're gonna continue with white. So chain up one, skip one, but because we have a straggler here I would totally keep that straggler down on top and bury it as you go. Therefore you don't need to worry about sewing it in later. So chain one, skip one, and single crochet in the next. So in the white section there was a total of uh, four single crochets. So this is the third. So chain one and then skip one and send single crochet into the next. But do not finish that. That's the last of that block. So what I would do this straggler that you've been bearing I would totally cut that out right now. Get that out of your face and before you continue so you do not forget take this strand and just move it forward out of your way. And now let's grab the next color which will be gold once again. So it's another bobbin. Okay. And we're gonna loop it like we did before. So loop it and pull it through and finish that white one off. And now move to the gold. So the very next stitch is going to be the gold. And then chain one, skip one and single crochet in the next. And this one in this block there's a total of six of them. Six single crochets. So chain one, skip one, continuing to bury that one uh, straggler. It's the only time you really need to worry about it except for when you're um, switching off all your blocks when you do a ma massive color change. So just continuing to go. So I have one, two, three, four. I'm counting the single crochets to make it easier for myself. This is five. Chain one and then finally you're gonna skip one and go and this is a six but do not finish it. So move it forward just get that bobbin out of the way. Move the yarn strand forward and we're moving to gray this time. So gray is right directly in the middle. So here's another bobbin. So put that yarn on and finish that one. And now let's do the middle. So the next stitch is a gray. Side by side they're single crochets and then chain up one and then skip one and you want a total of seven single crochets doing that. So chain up one, skip one, single crochet into the next. 
Okay, so chain one, skip one and I'm looking for the number seven. So this is one of those things where you need to prepare your bobbins ahead of time as well as looking at that diagram in order to make sense for yourself. Okay, so I got one, two, three, four, five, chain one, I want a total of seven. This is the gray that's right in the middle. Chain one and this I believe is number seven. So before I do it I just wanna count. So one, two, three, four, five, six and really the counting that is massive right now is only because you're getting started. So now that I have my seventh in there I don't wanna finish it. Move the bobbin forward out of the way just like you see and we're bringing back gold once again. So this is another bobbin that I'm bringing on. Okay, loop it. It gets easier. So if you're at this time like oh my god I'm not gonna be able to do that. You can do it. You just gotta prepare. This chain is the hardest part. So we're gonna finish that one now with the gold and in this one here there's six. So chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. I'm hiding that as I go. Chain one, skip one. Okay and keep going like that so that you have a total of six of these single crochets. So I got one, two, three, four. This is the fifth and chain one, skip one and this is the sixth. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. So I have another bobbin out of the way. I'm gonna shift that forward and now we're gonna bring on white. Okay, so I'm gonna just loop it, bring it on. Just like that. And I wanna start on white. Now white there's only four in a row. So we go into the next stitch. Okay, cause the two single crochets are side by side. Chain one, skip one and single crochet in the next and I'm bearing the white as I go in two. Chain one, skip one. The whites are not very um, big blocks. Chain one and this will be my fourth and the fourth that means it's done. So I don't wanna finish that so I'm just gonna move it forward. Okay and I'm bringing up my final color which is the gold. So I'm bringing on my last bobbin. So looping it on Moving to the next stitch that's available to you. It's important you take your time with this. That's why I'm not trying to speed through this tutorial today. So chain up one, skip one, single crochet in the next. This I tell you my friends the starting chain is the hardest. And if anything that you're gonna give up on will be in the starting chain. There's a total of six of single crochets right in the end. But the advantage to this one now is that because you're on the end and you have to turn around you're not gonna have to finish that bobbin off in order to to um, to restart. So that's kind of a cool thing. Okay so there's gonna be a total of six. So one, two, three, four, five, chain one and look at that. So I've skipped one and the very final is the final like so and that's the sixth one. So this is row number one of your entire project and I'm just going to stretch everything back out in real time. So let me just put it all back out here. All of these here should be in the front section as you went and they are. Okay so they're all in the front and so when I go to turn my work here I have to be very careful. I don't wanna get all these bobbins that I've got off here all to be twisted up. So what I have to do is I have to be very strategic on the way that I turn this project. So one way I'll turn this way and then when I go to the other one I'll go back the other way to prevent these from forever twirling. So let's move up to row number two and this is when we're gonna show you how to do the color changing in order to do each block and now it gets easier. So going up to row number two. Let me show you the diagram first and then we're gonna continue. So as we move up to row number two so the row number two we're gonna start off with two single crochets in a row. Then we're gonna jump over this single crochet. So we're gonna basically filling in these chain one spaces as you go. So rows number two and three do you see how they look different from each other? So in one is that we have to put two single crochets in a row to shift over and in the other it just starts off immediately 
just the other way. So just be conscientious of that and that just makes a lot of sense and you're gonna notice that the same concept. So when you put two in a row here you'll notice that it's two in a row on each one of these blocks as you go across. So let's just carefully turn our project. Okay and I wanna make sure I get everything and you're going to notice that all of the strands, so if you have any loose ends at this point that are hanging out, this is the time to get rid of them. So this is the time you wanna cut them out so they're out of your face and these are the ones that you are bearing as you wanna cross. Okay, so get those out of the way so you don't get confused. So let's begin. So all of the strands are now going to be coming out of the back of the project at this point. So it's coming out away from you. That's where you exactly want you. So if you turn this around and any one of these colors are coming out of this uh, front space, you know that it's wrong. So let's begin and we're gonna move up and we're going to begin with the first one here. So remember what I said, it was like two single crochets in a row. So we chain up one and there's a single crochet in the first one and in the first chain one space there's going to be a single crochet. And then we start it as usual. So chain one, skip the next single crochet and go right into a space. And chain one, skip the next single crochet and go right to the chain one spaces. So this is called the linen stitch or the moss stitch and it's very quick and easy. So once we keep going all the way across like that, just very quick and simple. So what we're gonna do now is that we are now heading to the next color change. So skipping one just like that and we want to make sure that we get into the last chain one space and we go into the final time of the gold and we pull through and we do not finish. Like we did before we're gonna take that yarn now and move it forward out of your way on the forward side so you should be looking at it. And now you're gonna pull the next color that is on the back and you're gonna pull it up towards you. And you're gonna finish that stitch. So now you're ready with the white. So going into the first single crochet with the new color, going into the first chain one space with the new color and then chain one and skip one single crochet and go to the next chain one space. Just like that. So chain one skip one and go right into the next chain one space and we're already done with the white. So you're gonna go into the final white of this particular row so it's just single crochet into the final white but do not finish it and I want you to grab that yarn that you had. Okay, so grab that yarn that you're working with. In my case that ball is unwinding itself so it's making it kinda difficult and I want to be able to pull it forward and out of the way. So I'm gonna get the gold which is next, chain up one, going into the next single crochet which is the gold, go into the next chain one space, okay, which is right there and then single crochet, or sorry, chain, or chain one, skip the single crochet and go right into the chain one space. And you're gonna continue to do that now with the gold. Are you getting the gist of that? So you're just filling in these chain one spaces. The secret is, is not to get all hung up on these bobbins. Um, it gets a little confusing and for myself because I'm working on a filming desk and not uh, right where I was uh, when I was doing this sample. I'm finding myself in a confined space. So I really kinda wanna make these balls um, stretch out and just kinda have them separated from each other. It makes it a lot easier. So I just keep doing that until I run out. So I've single crocheted into the final chain one space. I'm gonna single crochet into the final single. Move it forward. Move the ball forward out of the way. And now I'm gonna pick up the gray. So single crochet, so I wanna finish that one. Single crochet into the first one. Going into the first chain one space. And then continue. So chain one, skip one. Single crochet in the next chain one space. So the trick is, is to really watch these chain one spaces as you go. And really you can start speeding up once you start to get this under your belt. So go into the last chain one space of that same color and then single crochet into the final. And then what are you gonna do? You're gonna move the ball forward. So let's move that ball forward. So move that ball forward and then just pull through with the gold. Just like that. And now you're ready for the gold. So single crochet in the next one. Single crochet in the chain one space with the gold. Chain one. Skip one. And go into the next chain one space.
staying organized is the only way to do tartan or any kind of graphgan work and any kind of tension that comes with the yarn it can be a really big deal. Okay so going into the next chain one space and then finally into the final single crochet in this particular row. Again move that yarn forward out of the way and grab the new yarn that's coming from the back side. This is a white this time. Pull it up through. Go into, into the single crochet. Going into the next chain one space. And then chain one. Skip one and go to the next chain one. White is not very long so you don't need big bobbins for that. And finally going into the last one for white. Before you finish it, change it and go back to the gold. Pull the gold up and then just single crochet, single crochet in the next chain one space, chain one and keep going all the way to the end just like that. So just go into the next chain one space, chain one, chain one space, chain one and chain one space and then the final is a single crochet. So that completes off row number two. Check that off on your list. So all of the colors that you had should now all be coming back out of the front side of this project and when you go to turn this these will all be on the reverse side so that you can pull them forward in order to change. Let's uh, review going up row number three and then I'm just going to then take you on to other tips for this particular, particular pattern. So I've already turned my project and now row number three. So every other row is this way and every other row was the other way I just showed you. So you're gonna chain up one and single crochet into the first one and then immediately chain one. Okay and you go right for the first chain one space that you see. So you're doing everything um, just like you had been before. It's just the starting and stopping is slightly different because it's a different row. And you're gonna go all the way until you can see that you're running out of the gold. So I'm not really counting. I'm just kind of matching what's already there. So I'm gonna go into the final gold here. Pull through. Do not finish it. Put it forward. I'm now gonna grab the new white. Pull it through to finish. And then go into the first white. And then start. So chain up one. And go to the first chain one space available to you. Chain one. Go to the next chain one space. Chain one. And then final single crochet. Okay pull it forward, grab the new gold. So you can just see the colors just sitting there waiting for you. Okay and then single crochet in the first one, chain one and then go into the chain one space. I'm just watching for any tangles that come up. This happens when the balls are too close together. So you gotta watch that. That is my biggest tip for this whole thing. I could just do this video with showing you life is perfect but the reality is life is not perfect. <laughs> so I want you to pay attention to that because you can end up with this and it's not fun if you do that. So you gotta really keep these balls. I have them way too close together here off camera. So the reality is I would probably put one up here, one here and kind of keep it out of the way in that manner. So continue to go along just like I'm showing you here. I'm just uh, following exactly what I'm just showing you here and it will make a lot of sense at that time. So just use that diagram to be able to follow along and when I come back I'm gonna show you how to uh, do something different. So at this point whenever you finish a row all of these colors will be on the front side of the project. So if they're coming out of the back side and you were just finishing up over here now if I'm right handed um, it's if there is a, if there's any on the back you know that it's gonna be incorrect and it will be very noticeable then when you go to do this project. So make sure they're all on the front side when you get this done. The other thing that you're gonna notice is that you just wanna follow the diagram in order to get these blocks. So what happens when you've finished an entire block all of these have to be fastened off and then we restart again and we use the next set of colors. So in this case it'll be white and then black and then white and gold and white and black and white. So then we change up the colors that way. So all of these do not carry over in order to go to the next section. So they all have to be finished off. But what about this black stripe? Well the black stripe is actually quite easy to do and let's show you how to do that next. So you're gonna take your bobbin and you're gonna have a black and I would be inclined um, also to use um, a full yarn ball to do it because it's just easier instead of making all these little bobbins all over the place. But what you wanna do is that you wanna leave all of these into position when you go to do a black stripe. So do not fasten off anything. And what I want you to do is that I want you to turn your project around and let me show you how to do that. So pulling up a loop so you don't drop that last one I want you to turn your project just like that. Okay so all your colors will be on the back side 
here and we're not even gonna worry about any of those at this time. So I'm gonna create a slip knot to begin and it just is extra security for me and all I'm just gonna do right where that big loop was is that I'm just gonna start right in that particular spot and I'm just gonna match exactly what I've already see going on in the project. So let me just join it with a slip stitch like that, chain one and single crochet in the first one. Now if you remember, if you look at it carefully is that we always put two single crochet side by side in between these blocks of colors. The black is gonna be no different. So we're gonna just carry on the project as it's showing and then chain one and going into the next chain one space. Just like that. And so you just wanna match exactly what you're kind of doing as if you were working with the other colors but you're not. And so you're basically putting in a line of black here. So the next one is a black here. This is a color change so in between so there's two singles in a row. Okay and then this one happens to be another single because of the where we are in the pattern. And I continued to go across all the way with the black in the same manner. And just keep on going like that. Okay so I'll meet you at the end of this row. So I'm coming up all the way to the other side and I'm just going to carry on in the pattern but using black without changing any colors at all and I'm just going to go all the way across. So the black only appears in one line and then it's gone again and it's really quite a simple idea to be able to follow. So we have to fasten off and use a darning needle to hide in the last loose ends that you have. So in my case I was pretty close to this bobbin. That's not a planned thing that just happens to be so you really do wanna plan your bobbins ahead which is gonna be bring me to my next point coming up in the future. So once you get to the end you just wanna just trim your yarn and then use a darning needle to hide in the loose ends and I'll show you how to do that as well later on in this tutorial. So I'm just gonna leave that and what I'm gonna do now is that I'm going to not reverse my work but I'm just gonna go back like a typewriter and begin again now using these colors in order to match up everything that you see. So all I'm just gonna do and I'm gonna use a darning needle for that as well is that I'm just going to start up with the gold okay and we use the black as the foundation as far as the row and chain up one and single crochet into the first black one there and we carry on as, and using the black. So chain one and just look at the pattern and you can see exactly what's going on in this pattern. Okay so just carrying on and you're gonna see now the black will do a peekaboo color coming out. So as you work your way across, see I'm not even counting, I'm just looking for what is making sense in this whole thing. So there is the one, this is the last one, so pulling it through, pull that yarn forward, grab your next one which happens to be white, grabbing it up and then I carry on. So the next one is a single crochet, like that, chain one, going into the next chain one space. And I keep doing that same concept going all the way now but using bringing back the colors and it's a great way not to have to hide in all your loose work. So that one is in the wrong stitch. That one has to go right into this last one here. It's the last time you see it. Bring it forward out of the way. Bring the new one which is another gold. Bring it forward and then begin again. So I'll see you at the end of this row and we'll cover something else. So I just finished another row. I brought back my colors and on the other side you can see that I carried up the colors as you can see there. So right now I want to show you something else and I want to show you what I would do. So for example let's say that we got our block all the way done at this point. What are we gonna do? You can either get yourself all tangled up in knots but I like to simplify. So what I like to do, let's just turn our work and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So for example say that I'm ready now to finish this particular block off and I want to change so that we can go to the next layer of that we see here. So what I'd like to do for this one here is that I'd like to just start it up as normal. So in this case it's single crochet in the first one and in the first chain one space and then carry on. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna get to the end of that. So Myself, by the time you end up through here and this is just more myself, I end up getting tangled in this yarn a little bit. So what I like to do is that I like to relieve myself of the tangle right away and I like to just, so I'm just gonna stop this one here and I like to trim this yarn out now. Okay, I don't wait until the end. 
and I let it fall in the forward and then I grab the next one and then I finish it and I start the next one again. And because I know I'm gonna be finishing up with this yarn, I'm just gonna just get rid of the yarn as I go across instead of waiting to the end. And it just, it feels like a sense of accomplishment. So I'm gonna pull that one forward. I'm gonna trim it first. So now it's cut in the forward and bring up the gold. Do you get what I'm saying? So it just makes it easier and it gives yourself a bit of a relief to untangle yourself if you are tangling up and um, it's a lot easier to be able to manage that way as well. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna weave in my ends at this mo at the next point of this and then I'm gonna show you how to restart again when you're going for an another block of stitch work. So pull it forward. Oh sorry that's not uh, Yep, that's going in there. I'm looking at my pattern. Uh, not actually the diagram but just looking at the stitch work and I can see exactly what's going on. So I'm gonna pull that one out. Trim it. Now it's out. And then pull up the gray. So I'll meet you at the end of this row and I'm gonna show you how to weave in these ends. It just makes it a lot easier and then I'm gonna show you how to restart to doing another block that's a different color. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to be able to finish off. So say we just finished a whole block section like this and now we're ready to move on. You'll see that the color is different above. That means that this color is completely done with everything. So we need to finish this all off. So what we have to do is that we have to take a darning needle and just hide in our loose ends. So at this time I'm just gonna pull this one here and just pull it like a loop and I'm gonna place that onto a darning needle. It doesn't take a long time to do this. It just is a matter of hiding it and sliding it into position. You could use a darning needle to weave it in and out but I would highly recommend it only takes a moment and just sliding it in underneath the stitches and when you go to do the next row it's gonna get stuck into position anyway. So you just go once across and if you want to if you're really kind of not sure you can go twice but I would just go once if it were me. And then you can just safely trim your work. So you're just gonna move your way all the way down just getting rid of all these tails and then what you have to do is if you have, you have to reset yourself for the next block of colors that is gonna be right over top of these items. So just sliding it right underneath the stitches itself and once it's slid in see I'm not really applying any tension to it and then I just trim. So I'm gonna just hide in all these ones and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I'm bringing back this example. So for example, say I want to now redo the color. So every other, uh, so you have two sections like this, gold and white and gold and white and etc. So now I'm gonna bring back gold. So now I need the bobbins enough to do this section all over once again. So you have to have your bobbins already ready for you and then you can just restart again. So it's just a matter of just fastening on. Okay, right into the end and just follow the pattern as you normally would. Okay, so it's just a matter of resetting it all and again weave in your loose ends so that it's not uh, very noticeable as well. Single crochet in the first one. Okay, and in the next one here just happens to be as I'm following the pattern and just continuing to go and bury in those loose tails once again so that you will have to deal with it again but it's a lot easier to deal with it now than it was to do it on the chain when we first started. So once you get past that chain it's a lot easier to work with just like that. So as you get to your final one here um, you go right into there and then you pull it forward and then grab up your new bobbin. In this case it'll be white and then redo that going all the way and then continuing and basically it's really that easy. So in the next part of this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do the line that goes straight up. Do you notice that in the pattern? Let's look at that. Let's look on how to do that. So in the diagram we have it here and there is a line that goes straight up and so you'll see that here on the pattern. Let me show you that here and you'll see that it's just applied with the slip stitch going all the way straight up and it is right in the model sample as well. So this is how you do that vertical line without having to worry about changing colors and you can see that it's there. It's just a thin line that goes up. So I did change the color slightly in this. I made mine gray in the middle instead of black. So in this case I wanna use gray then to go along. I want to turn the project sideways and I want to be able to slip stitch across and I want to choose the middle of the block. Okay right down here and I just want to slip stitch. So just pulling it through. 
Okay, so the thing about this is that if you do slip stitching a lot of people end up going way too tight. So you gotta make sure you take your time in this. So you're just gonna go right around and just let it just glide. Okay, and you just want to slip. Okay, so not a single crochet but just slipping and you keep just moving up. Okay, so I'm going right over top of the middle section and I keep wanting to single crochet. If you want a single crochet that's your business. Um, you're the artist you can do what's right for you. You will have a little bit of a thicker line but if you do a slip stitch it just gets easier. And you're going to follow this project all the way through it. This whole vertical just staying in the exact same spot of moving your way up. So as I hit the black here I'm gonna still stay in the middle. And the trick is is not to have so much tension because these afghans like to stretch and slip stitching tends to be kind of really tight. So you just wanna just take your time moving up and you wanna pay attention to where you are in the block because you don't want to be all of a sudden just jumping over and then suddenly you're just have a, a wobbly line going up your project. So you just wanna slip stitch your way all the way and then when you finally get to the other side you're just gonna fasten off and then weave in your final. So there is the final there and I would probably just do it one last time just to lock that in and therefore you'll have a straight line going up in your project like that. Really quite simple right? So then you're just gonna fasten off and then you'll be done with that. So the final thing with this particular scarf is that there is fringe. So let me cover on how to do fringe and of course you wanna do your lines up in the middle one sections right here in order to make it work. And of course if you wanna add any more that's completely up to you. If you wanna add different colors maybe a strip of white that's up to you. So you, you're the artist you decide. So let's uh, cover on how to do fringe. So let's cover on how to do fringe. On this particular example of the scarf there is four strands per fringe and they're 20 inches long and once I measure out one I just lie it down and then I just um, just match it and right over top of each other. So what I want to do is now that they're right over top of each other I'm gonna fold the whole strands into half just like this and I'm gonna create a loop just like this and I'm gonna use that loop. So I'm gonna come into an edge and you can see where it is in the pattern as well is that you can just go use your crochet hook go right into an edge pull through like that and you now have that loop and using your fingers just feed the rest of this yarn through. So I lost one of my strands as I did that so let me just try again. So it does happen. Um, life is that way. So it's an easy thing to do. Just keep paying attention to everything. So fold it in half and I'm not too worried about the lengths until I do the final touches and get them all done and then I do a final trim across the vise. So there is my loop again and then I'm just gonna feed all of the rest of the yarn through that loop and that'll lock it into position. That's easy as it goes. So what you could do is that here in the white you could do white strands that are hanging down and then in the gray you could do gray that are hanging down and this provides a really quite a beautiful look and at the end you can see that these are not balanced with each other. So as I get all of it done not just this is that I would just measure and then I would just match them and then get rid of all the inconsistency so that my fringe is all consistent. So this is how you would complete a tartan afghan project or a tartan scarf. It's just a matter of having patience. It's a matter of uh, just using your skills for the grafgan work in order to make this happen. It looks really amazing once you get these done and people when you get these done give a ton of likes on Instagram and Facebook and all of that jazz because people that understand crochet know that this is not an overnight process and know that a lot of love and attention went into it. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.